Hello, this is Turquoise. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel, my podcast, whatever you, wherever you're watching or listening to me. Um, I'm making another attempt to leave the IOP program. I left a message with my counselor and another message with the front desk and told them I was leaving. And I think it, I, I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's because um, they, they frown on it. They frown on intuition, as I mentioned before. But uh, my intuition tells me that they don't like me because I'm LGBTQ+. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Bible again. This chapter in Luke talks about Jesus saying, You must hate your mother and father or you will not be my you, can, you you will not be my disciple. You cannot be my disciple. And uh, pardon me if I'm butchering that uh, verse or that um, passage. Um, I'm still kind of a baby Christian. I'm not I'm not completely educated, but uh, I'm going to search it right now to make sure I have it right. And um, I even asked for a secular. Oh, wait a minute, I have an email. Uh, I have it in my email. I asked AI, the I, the wonderful, lovely I Ask website that helped me with my Limerence Anonymous playlist, my 12 steps. Um, it said something about um, a secular version. I asked for it. I called upon AI to ask for a secular version of Luke's, Luke's passage. It might have been Luke 14. Let me see if I can search it. Luke Bible Hate Mother and Father I'm going to try and uh, Okay, I love this AI overview Luke 14, 26 I don't know if you can read that But I'm looking it up right now So I can read that Bible passage At least close to word for word in the Bible, Luke 14, 26 says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife, and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Some say that Jesus is using hyperbole to emphasize that discipleship means making Jesus the highest priority and being willing to lose one's life on earth for eternal life. Others say that the ancient meaning of the word hate in those times translate as preference and that Jesus is saying to prioritize him over your family and your own life. I'm going to just let that sink in, you guys. I'm going to be silent. Hate is a really strong word, everyone. I don't like to use it. I don't like to use it, especially since I made up my uh, mental wellness process and my universal ethics code. Um, I believe in loving everyone, but sometimes it is necessary, I believe, to love someone from a distance, and you can do that. And Teal Swan says to stop loving people, but to understand them. Not, not stop loving people, but um, I think she talked about loving our abusers, or loving our enemy, or loving our abusers. I think it's good that we understand our enemy and understand our abusers. If we if we get abused, if we get hurt, we should understand our hurters. And not to justify, but to help us fight their behavior off more effectively. We have to be able to know where it's coming from. It's like uh, when penicillin was invented. Um, it was made from bacteria. It was made from mold and bacteria, and scientists and doctors had to understand how penicillin worked um, in order to um, fight off bacterial infections and viruses too. Um, vaccines, you have to understand how viruses work in order to develop vaccines for them and uh, you know producing the antibodies. Otherwise, how can we make vaccines? How can we make uh, antibiotics? So it's like how can we how can we fight off our enemies more effectively if we don't understand them? It doesn't mean we have to love them. Now, I 
more than anything in the world, I have stro strove, I have strove to um, understand my family, understand my aunt, understand my, my mother, understand my father and my stepfather. Um, I can name people in my family. I'll still pseudonym them to protect them in case they're still around or defended. Um, my stepfather abused me. My, uh, my mother couldn't take care of me all the time. She was ill. My aunt abused me. Um, my grandparents weren't around. I mean, I understand my aunt had some really serious emotional problems and I wish she had been diagnosed by a psychiatrist. Maybe she was and she denied it. I don't know. But uh, she did confess to me that um, she was she was suicidal at one point in her life and she had to be in a hospital. But um, other than that, she uh, strove to appear normal. But she was struggling with some stuff. Now, I understand a lot about her, but it's hard to love her. She pushed me away, especially after my mother's death. She pushed me away a lot, and it hurt a lot. And I can't love a person like that. I have to detach. I can understand them. I can even pray for them. I can, uh, I can turn them over to God, but I can't love them. Love is when your heart is open, and when someone breaks it, when someone pushes you away and rejects you, it hurts. It hurts a lot. So uh, what is meant by, by hating, I, I'm pretty sure, now this is my opinion again, you know, I could be wrong, but I think Jesus meant we have to know who and what we can afford to love if we follow the Christian way, if we follow universal love. For me, if, we follow, if I follow universal ethics, even my own, my own code and my own uh, mental wellness process of five modules, which are validation, accountability, discipline, and purpose, and health, I can't even have those modules and practice them realistically, practice them the way I want to practice them, or encourage others to practice them the way I believe they need to be practiced, I can't even do that if I am so bogged down by uh, loving my aunt, <gasps> loving my... Well, I love my mother now, because I forgive her now. She's deceased, but I have more respect for my mother than I ever did. I understand she couldn't take care of me all the time, but I forgive her. It's hard to forgive someone who willfully hurt you, my aunt. <gasps> I can't love someone like that. You know, it doesn't make sense. I can understand them. I can uh, pray for them. I can uh, I can pray that, that, that God loves them, that Jesus loves them. You know, but not loving them. How can you how can you love and nurture and open your heart? How can you open how can I open my heart to an abuser? It's dangerous. It'll it'll gaslight you, it'll make you lose your mind, it'll it'll make you make your heart break some more. It might even uh, kill your spirit, very likely, if you're not careful. So, uh, I'm, I think Jesus meant, meant uh, even psychologists say, experts have said to me that um, it's necessary to, to hate. You know, you have to have some kind of an oppositional bonding when you're dealing with people, especially your families. When you're two years old, you have to learn how to set boundaries. Even if your parents have to explain to you why, why they're uh, punishing you or why they're uh, sending you to bed at 9 o'clock p.m. so you can get up for school in the morning, or, um, you know, you're, you're, you're going to rebel. You're two years old, you're going to say, no, no, I won't go to bed. I'm no bed, no bed, no, no bed, no brush your teeth, no wash my face, no, no food, no broccoli, no. You know, no, no, no. You need to be able to go through that stage when you're a ch when you're a child, and more often than not, we have not gone through that. I didn't have boundaries with my aunt. My aunt took care of me since I was two, and when I got angry with her, when I had my two-year-old anger, my normal two-year-old anger that she should have walked me through instead of punished me for it or not loved me for it, my aunt, you know, 
my aunt was not able to handle that. My aunt got insulted when I didn't, when I was mad at her. My aunt got insulted. So, um, I didn't know how to oppositionally bond with her. I didn't know how to do oppositional bonding. And, um, so, um, if some, if some Christian had walked up to me after the way, the way that happened, I would not have understood about, about, uh, the necessity of going through separation from my, my family, at least so I can become an individual, having sep having boundaries, having separation, some kind of separation. Instead, I was enmeshed. So um, I believe that if we're enmeshed to our families and to our, our uh, mammon life or our uh, love life, or you know, if we're if we're enmeshed with that even more than we are to God or to what God wants us to do in the world and with ourselves and with very likely our new life, our, our new friends, our new uh, associates, our new chosen families. Um, we have to separate. We have to, uh, I don't like the word hate, that's a strong word, but back in archaic times, back in Jesus' time, he felt like he needed to use that word, just like in psychology it's necessary to oppositionally bond from our families, you know, in order to even be individuals. So thank goodness I'm learning what, what's meant by that. I prayed for this. I prayed for understanding on the hate is a strong word. I prayed for understanding on this uh, Bible passage. It was pretty disturbing. And I think I think that's one of the reasons that, that, that Christians become ex-Christians. They don't understand or they they feel like they have they can't be Christians anymore because of that and I don't believe that's true I think we can be even better Christians all right I'm gonna go now be safe everyone this is just my opinion and opinions are like birthdays and if you don't want to celebrate it that's okay just click on another video